Okay, hello and welcome. This is Cyber Potato, and we'll continue with building our card game in React. So we added the buttons, we styled the buttons, but I'm not very satisfied with it because um, one is for voting down the second is for voting up and yet they look the same so let's change it okay let's try how we could change this of course you could copy it all and say uh, that this is down button and this is red button and we'll just put that here and it's great but I'm really concerned about code reuse here we're copying everything so you know this is not proper way of styling stuff this is not proper CSS so maybe we can use cascading because these are side components, but they're still used for building CSS. Well, of course you can. You can extend one side component from another saying something like this. It will now inherit all the properties and you just specify just the one that you'd like to overwrite. Still working good, okay. So let's carry on. Is there another way that we could use this? Well, it works properly as a styles because we use them for CSS, but they are still components, right? So maybe we could pass a prop deciding whether to display the button as um, red or blue. Of course you can. You can just say, let me just go back to using the button. You can just say, for example, stuff like background color, let's say, or maybe no, let's say type is going to be down. Okay. Uh, and now I can say something like this. Um, props, props type equal mm, down. Is that true? If it is, let's say this is going to be red and else it's going to be blue. Still working. So I can pass a prop here for that component and use it with this syntax. So this is dollar sign, curly braces, props. You choose the, choose the property from the past props. And then I'm just doing a ternary if here to decide what to specify. Also, I could use it, for example, here to decide the color of, uh, of the font. So it's gonna be white. And this is going to be black. Nice. Okay. So this is how I can use props to change my component. Uh, and also, as I've shown you, you can use the extension. So uh, yeah, inheriting from one set component to another. Okay. But currently, as you can tell, nothing is happening when I'm clicking on my buttons. So let's change that. Here I will pass on button click, yeah, on button click uh, function that will be a callback used for when I'm clicking a button. So let's just add it. Well, should we? Now let's let's left it here and go here. I'm gonna create that function 
I'm gonna call it on button click uh, and let's see if this works button was clicked and here I have to pass it on button click uh, this on button click let's save this let's save this okay uh, does this work no why? Because I didn't add it at all. On click should call mm, on button click. Okay, let's just yeah. Grab this and now it should be working. Yeah. Can I somehow confirm that my component is getting the props yeah you can go here go to more tools go to extensions uh, open the drawer go to open from web store type react here and get yourself react developer tools okay once you install it and if the page has a React added to it, in your uh, inspector panel, in your developer tools, you will see the React tab here. And this is gonna render whole tree seen not as a DOM, like in elements, but the way that Re React sees it. And here, I can find something. I hope this is start component consumer forward ref. Oh, why is it unknown? Oh, because I didn't give it a name. Let me change that real quick to buttons tab. Mm, const buttons tab. I can export so let's do buttons tab let's format with prettier okay and now I can search for it you have buttons tab and it has a props of on button click okay so you'll see me uh, especially in more complex projects using this React DevTools to inspect the tree of the components that is currently being rendered by React. Okay, uh, yeah, but now if I click on my button, I can't really tell and specify which one was clicked. And we can fix this using one of two approaches. First is we can simply create a function here and pass a parameter here for our on button click function. Let me say that this is down. Okay. And this is up. Okay. And here you might be concerned that we'll create a function every time that uh, this is being rendered. Uh, to be honest, the memory footprint isn't too big. And as you'll see in our next tutorials, currently there are ways to avoid that problem. Okay, uh, I'm talking about memoization, of course, and uh, React memo that we have in the newest react but let's stay with this for the moment and here i have a type information and i can just use the type here and this should help me determine which button was clicked and it does okay what if i don't 
want to create this function in this place? Well, if we just leave it at that, our function will be called with a, a standard event object uh, and this object is passed automatically to every function that is handling some kind of UI um, event like a typing or selecting from the drop down or clicking on a button and as you see okay this isn't really the native DOM event that you would get okay this is something called syn synthe synthetic thank you synthetic event so what is synthetic event you see there are some differences in how each and single browser handle the events the ui events produced by the user and react to avoid those differences implements common interface synthetic event that is the same across all browsers so you can think as a um, synthetic event as a wrapper for the native event that happens just to get rid of the differences between the browser's implementation okay but that's all fine and nice but how to get some kind of information uh, based on the type on, of the button on which we clicked well i can simply say that this has name of down and this has type the name sorry of up okay let's just do this i believe and here I can read event target name. Okay, and now I got the same information without creating the function while rendering. Okay, but I don't want to use this uh, double dots just to get to one value. So let me unpack it. I know that event has a target. And I know that target has a name and I will rename that name uh, to a bet variable okay and this should do it yeah still working okay Whew. so what we have here we have the button stop pretty much working we have the call box pass to button step and returning with the information of which button was clicked okay so now what we should do is fetch new card from the same deck and then compare the old value the new value from the deck and the bet that user placed so let's do just that mm, yeah so we'll start with getting the deck deck id and the value and i remain rename it to previous value from this state okay uh, and now i have to grab new card from the deck so i'll await and i can do this because you can mark this as a sync i'll await for re for draw card from deck and here we'll pass deck id and this doesn't exist yet but we're going to write it so this is going to be exported uh, and function draw card 
from deck is going to take one argument of deck ID. And yeah, and the wheel, we're going to need some requests here. So it's going to be, of course, data, but coming from the API get, we need to pass here the deck, uh, deck ID and draw and we'd like only one card please so this is gonna go to params count is one uh, and i'm gonna take cards from data uh, yeah, I'm gonna say that value, value and image, image is coming from the cards from the first index because we requested only one and I will return deck ID, value and image, okay. And this should work because I will just say that um, I need value and I will need image from this. I don't care about the deck ID because I have it already. Okay. All right, all right, all right. But now, as I'm looking at this function, draw deck, draw card from deck, and I'm looking at this part, they're looking pretty much the same. So maybe we can just do. We can just do something like card response is going to be await draw card from deck. Now we have deck ID here in place already, and then we we'll just return card response. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it's kind of, you know, the refactoring process when, when we, we're trying not to repeat ourselves. Okay, it should be, it should be good. No, it's not. It's not good. Okay, cannot read property cards of undefined. Um, why? So, I don't know what happened here, but I can place a debugger. And it should help me a little bit. Okay. So. Yeah. Can we just like stop right here? No, we can't. Can't we put cards of undefined? So data is undefined. And then why is that? It shouldn't be. So we have cards. we have cards so what is the data here actually it's undefined interesting maybe if i could just you know mark it async and use a wait that would be way better uh, and we don't need the booger here. So let me just. Uh, oh, yeah. Can I remove that? And where's my card? Mm. Card response it returns. Uh, Oh, I could just do yeah this. 
uh, why mm. it's here deck ID mm. I return deck ID oh I do specify it but it's undefined again. Mm. What I'm not seeing here. Cards, value, image, look ID please. Oh, cards. Oh, I'm um, no, it's, it's, it's fine. There is a value, everything should be in order, but uh, I'm not getting card response here. I'm getting just, yeah, I don't need to unpack it here. Okay, Whew. yeah, now we're good. Okay, and since that has been going for 20 minutes now, I'm gonna end it right here because it should redraw when I click. But well, does it now? Yeah, it, it does, but I'm just not logging it anywhere. Value image give us different value yeah it it does okay so let me stop it right here and in the next episode we will finish finish this